Hello, this is Dr. Leo at Lee Time. I serve on board my local mental health association. Since the pandemic, we see the cases of anxiety and depression increase a lot. With the ending of the pandemic, stress comes with us all the time. To keep our body health is not only about the physical, but also the mentally. In today's video, I introduce you the herbs we can use every day to help protect our nerve system and brain health. Before the video, I would like to introduce you uh, this book. It's uh, called Herbal Recipe for Vibrant uh, House. It's the author is uh, Rosemary Glaxers. I don't take any commission from the book, but just I like it, I read it, I like it. And in this book, uh, he, she talk about herbs to help uh, strengthen our the brain. It's including the ashwagandha, ginkgo, ginseng, and go to color. Ginseng, when I was in China, ginseng is a, a adaptogen. It's so powerful medicine to help uh, improve the people's uh, qi, the base of the life and uh, improve their also the brain health, make them uh, kind of, uh, you know, when you are sick, you feel weak and this kind of wake up. Your... And the common way to extract the ginseng we use is uh, using the tincture. We often use uh, over 60% alcohol, the liquor, or 65%, that's 120 to 130 proof of the alcohol to extract the ginseng for a long time. It's soaking there for months and then you keep drinking a little bit every day and this can help strengthen your body. I would like to use ashwagandha as an example today. In my last video, I talked about the benefits of ashwagandha and how to make the ashwagandha hydrosol, you can watch my the previous video. Ashwagandha actually has a long history being used as adaptogen. It is also called Indian ginseng, help uh, improve the body strength, emotionally balance it. There are many medical research proof its benefits of the ashwagandha on the brain health to help treat uh, Alzheimer or other the aging brain problems. How we use ashwagandha? There are two general ways. The one way is you just eat the powder and the second way is to make the tincture as we make a ginseng tincture. Well, the tincture actually is quite efficient. The reason is with ashwagandha example, so it's main medicinal, functional, phytochemical including such as uh, vaginal. Those chemicals have a very good solubility in alcohol, but not in water. The challenge is how to remove the alcohol from tincture because some of the people cannot tolerate high concentration of alcohol. So there's a compromise. The other question I want to talk today is, uh, you see people are making all kinds of a tincture with all different uh, proof of alcohol such as uh, most popularly like using the vodka that is a 40% or 80 proof and some use 190 proof that is uh, 95% it's very high uh, which one right why they use the different concentration in the research they measure the solubility of those uh, phytochemicals organic phytochemicals within a different percent of uh, the alcohol and the water mixture. That is uh, the liquor, right? The liquor is uh, alcohol and uh, water. And from this chart, you can see with the increase of the concentration of alcohol, you can see the solubility increase quite fast from a zero to 60%. It's super fast. And then getting slowed down, but still going up, but getting slowed down the curve from the 60% to 100%.
So my suggestion is you use a 60%. That is a ending point of the fast growth period. So you take the benefits. You can choose a lower concentration, but don't go too low. 40%, yeah, it's uh, easy available because of vodka, the easy available. Um, but you want to soak it for a longer time to have a better extraction. There's no like a 60% liquor. It's, it's not quite popular. From the liquor store, we can easily get a vodka that is a 40% or some uh, green alcohol that's uh, almost 90% 90, 90 or 95%. So I have a free table. So here is the showing you the example. So you're tapping the numbers the concentration of your one phase one like vodka and then how much vodka you will use and what is the other uh, the liquor you have like uh, 90 percent that's 180 proof you have a if you have a 190 proof you put a 95 there and then you say i want to reach 60 percent then it will pop up the number to show you how much of those 90 percent alcohol you should mix with that vodka the 80 proof the vodka so you can use the table to calculation to help you calculate and make the right concentration alcohol and uh, i can put the link down below you can sign up if you wanted the table just uh, send me the email i will send you the table so when we are making the ashwagandha tincture, we already have answered the question what concentration of alcohol we need. That is a 60%. And the second question is what's the ratio between herb, the ashwagandha, and alcohol. Research found that 1 to 10 have a pretty efficient extraction of those uh, phytochemicals. That is, I take a, a quarter cup, the so ashwagandha, that is a chop the dry ashwagandha root then soak into 500 milliliter alcohol it will be a process it will take uh, a few months that's the best well, you can if you need to use it very quickly at least two weeks the next step is gonna to drain it to strain the herbs out by using a press so i designed this uh, press it's uh, easy to use so just pour in the tincture and most of the liquid will go through the tiny holes that is the same size as a, a cheesecloth and 99.9% of the herbs will be uh, separated out and I use a press to manually press the liquids out. Keep the liquid for your use. Take a half to one teaspoon twice a day. You can just drink a straight or mix with your drink, like a tea or some other uh, juice, or mix with the food and help you to reduce the feeling of the alcohol. The other way you can try is to use a double boiler distillation to extract the alcohol out. Uh, I will put a link after at the ending image of this uh, this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something today. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.